Hello and welcome to this OpenTX Mix School video. Now, if you have not watched any of the OpenTX Mix School videos already, I have an entire playlist. I'll put a link down in the description in case the little pop-up box that should appear at this point in the video doesn't appear on your particular device. Now, OpenTX, as part of the FreeSky radio system, as well as others now, is an incredibly powerful operating system. And I haven't yet come across anything that anyone has asked me to configure or program on OpenTX that it hasn't been able to do. But for a lot of pilots, that's overwhelming. So if this is your first video you've ever watched about OpenTX, don't start with this one. This is going to do some complicated stuff. Go and start with that OpenTX mix school and start at the very top. This video is picking up from one I did a little while ago, and that is talking about auto up elevators. Now, in the past couple of weeks, I've done lots of videos where with things like RD Pilot, iNav, and even things like the ZOHD Copilot, there are auto launch features where you can throw the model into the air and it climbs away under its own power, making launching fixed wing models in particular very, very straightforward. Now, if you're using a flight controller that doesn't have some kind of auto launch function or you're just throwing it to get it to climb to the sky, we did a video a while ago where it just added a little bit of up elevator just to pull that nose up so it would go into the air and as soon as you touched any of the other controls it would take off the, that up elevator just to help the model get airborne. And lots of people were really interested in that video. It used a couple of logical switches to figure out when you moved either the elevator or the aileron. But I've had a couple of people get in touch and a massive thank you at this point to both Ulf Martinson and also a gentleman called Leslie Adams who got in touch and said there's another way you can do that. And this is one of the cool things about OpenTX. There's always at least two or three ways that you can do pretty much everything. And this is a really elegant solution. So let me take you through this model that the guys sent through uh, just to kind of explain this slightly more elegant way, I think, of doing it. And I must say, if you have any kind of cute tricks like this that you want to share on the channel, then do let me know. Now this works in pretty much the same way. So if we look at the inputs, inputs, this is set up obviously for a flying wing, just aileron, elevator and throttle. And the mix is there, that's, that'll be one of the control surfaces, that's another one. And there we have this extra little bit of support here to just increase the elevator slightly while it's flying. But that's only enabled when logical switch one is turned on. And then you got this weird thing down here, which is actually part of the really smart stuff, where both the aileron and the elevator are acting together on channel 14. Now we're not gonna use channel 14 on the model, it's just used as part of the mixing. Jumping into the logical switches, then we can see that it is an awful lot simpler in here. In my particular version, I had to create lots of logical switch steers and, and kind of meld them all together to detect when the elevator or the aileron had been moved and that I wanted to then fly it so to drop off the elevator support for launch. Where this is really straightforward. There's just uh, one line for SH, which is the switch to activate this particular thing. And then the next one is using this little symbol here. Now these two vertical lines alongside the A means when it's close to. So what it's doing is it's detecting when channel 14 gets more than 15 away from the middle position. And if you remember, in the mixes, channel 14 is the aileron and elevator. So let me show you how that works, because I think this is really, really cute. Let's just make sure it's SH that is the one we're interested in. So there's SH, which is the momentary switch, which actually is a nice one to use for something like this, but you could use a regular switch. So I'm going to turn SH on. Now just watch channels 1 and 2. They would be the two control surfaces on the wing. When I switch SH on, there's that little bit of extra support. And then I'm going to increase the throttle and I'm going to chuck the thing. And then watch what happens as soon as I take off um, and so I'll move the right stick, this is a Mo2 radio, it immediately knocks the elevator off. So let's do that again. SH on, there we go. That, that um, applies the 15%, if I can turn that off, we can just make it a temporary thing. And then as soon as we start flying it, it knocks it off. And what's happening here, if you look at the logical switches, as soon as I switch SH on, then 
logical switch one turns on, which is what is adding that extra little piece in. As soon as I start flying it, logical switch one turns off and that's how it works. So this is a really, really cute way of doing it. So in the mixes, what you're using is one of the channels to act as the way to put the two controls together so you can test whether or not each of them has moved. So you're testing for one thing, not lots and lots of different things in either direction, which is really smart. And then logical switches, you're basically having that logical switch turn on as a sticky so long as the switch has been activated and so long as this logical switch 2 isn't activated really 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 smart i love this way this is a really elegant way to do it and actually the way i would do it now i've seen it now the other thing that's in here is an auto trainer using exactly the same thing what you could do is you could also detect when the master radio that has been when the controls are being moved so rather than have a switch that you, as a, as the pilot who's the master or the trainer, it, that you hold to kind of give control to the student and then you let go to kind of take control, which is typically how it's done, this does it automatically, which is really clever. So again, if we go into the mixes, there we have all of the things. So again, testing if any of the controls this time have moved away from their central position and then exactly the same way a logical switch you have these other controls in here that's essentially doing the same thing so when the all the controls are in the middle position on the master radio then the trainer function is enabled as soon as you move it then it's disabled really really smart way of doing it so a massive thank you to both Oof and to Leslie for these ideas. Again, if you have something like this, one of these little tips and tricks, then do get in touch with me. Quite happy to cover it here on the channel. I love stuff like this because I'm also learning new stuff as well. I personally hadn't had any real playing with that new function, those two vertical lines either side of the letter A. But now you know what it kind of does and how powerful it is and coupled with the way of actually connecting lots of different controls together in one line in the mixer means that it's a really cute way to detect whether something's moved. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media and if you like the video and like what I'm doing here then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.